Hi and welcome to another study. So for this study we're going to be looking at the house of David. I hope you prayed for the Spirit of Christ to lead you and you've got your Bibles open. So before we get into the theme verses let's look at some names and their meaning. So just a reminder that David is a man after God's own heart but we know that David is a type of Christ. So of course Jesus is a man after God's own heart. Jesse, his name means my husband or Yah exists. Saul means asked for, and that's exactly what the people did in Exodus 19.8. Everything the Lord says we will do. In other words, give us the old covenant we want, works-based salvation. David means beloved, weak, or flowing. So we have that river symbol here tied in with Christ. I like this idea of weakness too, or humanity, because Jesus was 100% human when he came to the earth. That means the only divinity Christ had access to was the Father dwelling in him, which did the works. We have Michael, who was David's first wife, whose name means who is like God, and she is a little stream of water. So we have the typology, symbology of the church here. We have Eliakim, which is a symbol for Jesus, whose name means God resurrects or God rises. We also have a couple Laodicean symbols here. We have Shebna, the seat of beauty, or captured, or please let them return. And we also have Edom, which means red all over. And that's exactly what Jesus said to the Pharisees in John 9, 41, because you say you're not blind, your sin remains. So let's move on then to some Bible numerology. So we have six, which is the number of the man. This is also the number of Philadelphia, plus two. That's God and his son, Jesus. That's from John 3, 16. God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten son. Those are the two. Add them together, we have eight. And all the Jewish boys were circumcised on the eighth day. So we have circumcision of the heart and new life in Christ. Does scripture say that? It does in John 14, 23. Jesus answered and said to them, If anyone love me and will keep my word, and my Father will love him, and we will come into him and make our home with him. 1 Samuel 16, 10. Thus Jesse made seven of his sons pass before Samuel, and Samuel said to Jesse, The Lord has not chosen these. And Samuel said to Jesse, Are all these the young men here? Then he said, There remains yet the youngest, the eighth. And there he is keeping the sheep, which of course the symbology for Christ should be very evident. So with that intro out of the way, let's jump into our theme verses here. And the summary is the house of David are the remnant after the trying or sifting occurs. Its present condition is dilapidated and neglected. We have false doctrine with no godly love. But that structure is going to be repaired during the former and latter reign. The house of David are going to receive the inheritance from the Edomites. And that is from the prophecy of Obadiah. So Amos 9.8, Behold, the eyes of the Lord are on a sinful kingdom, Israel, and I will destroy it from the face of the earth. Yet I will not utterly destroy the house of Jacob, says the Lord. For surely I will command and I will sift them, the house of Israel, among all nations, as grain is sifted in a sieve. Yet not the smallest grain will fall to the ground. All the sinners of my people shall die by the sword, who say the calamity shall not overtake nor confront us. On that day I will raise up the tabernacle of David, which has been fallen down, and repair its damages. I will raise up its ruins and rebuild it as in the days of old, that they may possess the remnant of Edom. And all the Gentiles who are called by my name, says the Lord of hosts. Behold, the days are coming, says the Lord, when the plowman shall overtake the reaper, treader of grapes, him who sows seed. The mountains, God and Jesus, shall drip with sweet wine, and the hills, us, shall flow with it. I will bring back the captives of my people. They will rebuild the waste cities and inhabit them. So we have, again, um, the desolate condition of the house of David, but it will be restored, and it is tied in with the former and latter reign. Okay, so the first point here is very basic, but bear with me. The house of David is not a literal house. The reason that I bring this up, often when I'll go into Sabbath school, I'll hear someone say, oh, I'm so happy to be in God's house today. Well, that is error, and we need to call it out when we hear it. So I'm not going to read all of these verses. I'll read a couple of them, because like I said, this is very basic in Scripture. 1 Corinthians 3.16, Do you not know that you are the temple of the God, and the Spirit of God dwells in you. If anyone defiles the temple of God, God will destroy him. For the temple of God is holy, which temple you are. I've got a section from Hebrews 3. I'm not going to read that. 
Um, I've got Ephesians 2, which I will read in verse 19. Now, therefore, you are no longer strangers and foreigners, but fellow citizens with the saints and members of the household of God, having been built on the foundation, the apostles and prophets, Jesus Christ himself being the chief cornerstone, in which the whole building being fitted together grows into a holy temple in the Lord, in whom you also are being built together for a dwelling place of God in the Spirit. And you can also read 1 Peter 2, which I have here as well. Okay, so point number two. The house of David includes the Gentiles too. There's no salvation by pigmentation, okay? Acts 15, 12, Then all the multitudes kept silent, listened to Barnabas and Paul, declaring how many miracles and wonders God had worked through them among the Gentiles. And after they became silent, James answered them, saying, Men and brethren, listen to me. Simon has declared how God at first visited the Gentiles to take out of them a people for his name. And with this, the words of the prophets agree, just as it is written. After this, I will return and I will rebuild the tabernacle of David, which has fallen down. I will rebuild its ruins and I will set it up so that the rest of mankind may seek the Lord, even all the Gentiles who are called by my name, says the Lord who does these things. Ephesians 2.14, For he himself is our peace, who has made both one, broken down the middle wall of separation, having abolished in his flesh the enmity, that is, a law of commandments contained in ordinances, so as to create in himself one new man from the two, thus making peace. Okay, so point number three, because we're studying about the house of David, let's study about the reign of the antitypical David, who is Christ, because there are several prophecies that are very important here. Jeremiah 33, 14, Behold, the days are coming, says the Lord. I will perform that good thing which I promised to the house of Israel, to the house of Judah. In those days and at that time, I will cause to grow up a David a branch of righteousness. He shall execute judgment and righteousness in the earth. In those days, Judah will be saved and Jerusalem will dwell safely. And this is the name by which he will be called, the Lord our righteousness. For thus says the Lord, David shall never lack a man to sit on the throne on the house of Israel. Nor shall the priests, the Levites, lack a man to offer burnt offerings before me, to kindle grain offerings, and to sacrifice continually. Second Samuel 7, 11. Since that time that I commanded judges to be over Israel and have caused you to rest from all your enemies, also the Lord tells you that he will make you a house. When your days are fulfilled and the rest with your fathers, I will set up your seed after you, who will come from your body, and I will establish his kingdom. He shall build a house for my name, and I will establish the throne of his kingdom forever. I will be his father, and he shall be my son. And your house and your kingdom shall be established forever before you. Your throne shall be established forever. So when we look back at Jeremiah 33, we can take away three key elements in this reign. Of course, the first one, obvious, it's kingship. Daniel 7, 13, I was watching in the night visions, and behold, one like the Son of Man, this is Christ, coming in the clouds of heaven. He came to the Ancient of Days, and they brought him near before him. Then to him it was given dominion and glory and a kingdom. And of course, this occurred after he rose from the dead and ascended. Okay, so point number two is the continual priesthood of Christ. Psalms 110.4, the Lord has sworn and will not relent. You are a priest forever, according to the order of Melchizedek. And then the final item here, we have the continual sacrifice. In other words, this is looking at the time period. Not that the sacrifice is always occurring, but the sacrifice that occurred at one time, it covers all all the time period of humanity. And we also have a related note, the perpetual grain offering of the word. So we see that in Matthew 24, 35. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will by no means pass away. So let's do a brief summation here. We see that the house of David is currently in disrepair but it will be rebuilt in the time of the latter reign. We see that the house of David is not a literal house and that it includes the Gentiles as well. And we saw some of the key attributes of the reign of this antitypical David that will help us be able to identify him. So I pray that you'll continue to read and study these things, and I pray that you'll listen to part two of this message.